Assalamualaikum and hello YouTube. My name is Nur Muhammad from Animwatch and yes, it is that time of the year again. So when we do our state of the watch collection, right? So this is the part three of my <laughs> state of the watch collection. I've done the diverse watch for the part one and a digital or, or a Casio SOTC video a few weeks back <laughs> or depending on when you see this video and yes it is time for the others right so we have um, dress watches we have chronographs we have pilot watch and uh, what do you call it field watch and also a tritium watch all right so anyway so let's get to the first one which is oh you know before we do that let's do a quick wristwatch check today i'm wearing my latest addition to my diverse watch collection which is the zishton <laughs> i'm not really sure whether that is the correct way to spell it it is a cistern um doxa military homage watch and awesome awesome thing of course i've done a an unboxing or initial review for this particular this particular piece so do check it out all right so first up is my dress watch which is basically the least uh, favorite in a category of watches that i have in my collection basically oops sorry yep i've dropped something anyway so this watch is an SKN, snkl 45 so it features a 37 millimeters in diameter i think at about uh, 43 or 44 millimeters from dark to light and an amazing thickness of just 12 millimeters but with this um tw uh, 18 millimeters lug width right so i just love this um how to say cushion case you can see that the, res the resemblance here this is also a cushion case this one is also a much smaller cushion case so yeah i think i just love this <laughs> cushion case designs by seiko right so um uh, of course it is a dress watch with that uh, dark gray sunburst style with that beautiful applied indices i don't think those are maybe those are embossed from the back but i don't really think so because you can't really see the um the how to say this uh, it basically it is an applied indices which is quite a lot of it's really really good for something that is so budget you can just get this for under 100 us 100 us dollars of course it features that 7s26 where you have to do that seiko seiko shake right so there's no hand winding <laughs> there's no um uh, there's no hacking whatsoever but still a cracking piece for the money and yeah we should check out that dolphin hands and yeah i <laughs> when I bought this watch and I, I said I made a video a video with the title of if you don't have the budget for a, a Sarb 033 why don't you consider this but yeah still people say that it is a, a basically a non-substitute for the a Sarb 033 but for me if you don't have the budget this is as close as you can get to that Sarb 033 right so of course it features this day and date uh, uh, window here with that applied Seiko 5 logo and of course it is an automatic and we have this super duper tiny crown at 4 o'clock and yeah we can see the movement the 7s26 movement from the back right so yeah very very nice budget watch and it also comes with um, white and also blue dial color so I've opted for the most versatile one so you could of course get those CSNKL 43 and also SNKL 41 right so next dress watch is my Rado Korean vintage watch from uh, I think I bought this in Japan somewhere around 2019 I, I've went to a flea market somewhere around uh, I can't remember so maybe Odaiba no, not not Odaiba but somewhere along the route to go to the Disneyland <laughs> I can't really remember the name place there but of course of course I've got it for a great bargain right so when it when I've got it there are quite a lot of dust inside the watch um, I think the the dial is basically have already started flaking right so you can see that there is uh, maybe uh, water got into it and you can see that there is a bit of uh, those du um, gold dust looking but it's basically the uh, paint on the dial has has you know somewhat deteriorated and it looks like a gold it, it's it's blacky flaking out right so you can see on the you know let's just remove the rado you can see that on the rado sign there Oop, come on focus focus come on focus it's very very difficult to get a focus on this thing because yep you can see that on the rado logo here there is a bit of gold that, that is not a gold but it's actually a flaking on the dial but i just love this thing at first because of that you see that 
con you see that um, surface of the crystal it is basically on the surface of the crystal it's basically circular or curved but it there those shape are basically under the crystal maybe I could show I oh, it's difficult to focus and oh my god that is very difficult right so and there is also a Rado logo on under the crystal which is very very good so I love this watch so much I sent it to for a service and uh, <laughs> yeah, basically the service cost is basically the same as the cost of purchase so yeah I am definitely not going to sell it but because it is special right so uh, 36 millimeters from in diameter from here to here a luck to luck of just about 40 I think about 43 or 44 come on focus and at the back we have that um, Rado logo there uh, 11020 probably the modern number but it is called the Rado Korean somewhere I think this was um, produced somewhere between 1970 to 1975 I can't really remember so if you guys yeah I've done a research for this particular piece but I don't really how know how to uh, track the um, how to recognize how to search for the actual production date so if you guys know please do let me know in the comment section below and somehow yep yeah you can see that there is that rado logo there and of course that that <laughs> anchor logo of this um, of the uh, of the rado does spins right so according to where you how you how you <laughs> how you handle it right so this is watch number two another uh, dress watch and of course yeah i put it on this um vintage looking um leather bracelet from straps go oh i totally forgot to put it on maris and show you how it looks like so on my 6.75 inch wrist so let's just take the a um snk 45 of course it is on on aftermarket bracelet and i think that it fits the bill it fits the looks of this uh, SNKL45 and let's put on the rado oop okay 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 so I almost dropped that drop the camera there and yep this yeah. okay so this is how it looks on my 6.75 inch wrist basically yes it did these things are small watches but I don't really mind it because yeah I could rock this small watch it's no problem whatsoever Right, so that is watch number two and let's go to the chronograph right so again something that i don't really wear but i do have in my collection so this is the first one this is the filippo loretti ascari right so <laughs> quite a lot of hate generated towards this particular brand yeah yeah i could understand why because of their internet marketing strategy blah 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 but we're not going to be looking into that but still very very nicely done of course it does feel a bit too expensive for the for the watch because but you know what it's not really badly finished guys so i don't really know yeah maybe you guys can you know can chime in the in the comment section below what do you actually hate about this brand but still as for the watch itself it is not that bad guys so it features this um vk63 movement with that mecha quartz movement and that beautiful sunray blue dial i just love how this thing look and it has this um how this what do you call this well, our marker bezel right so with a very very annoying 90 click but of course you could use this as a um dual time bezel right so yeah because it is using battery so and of course this one is using maker quartz so you can just stop and it snaps back right so that is an awesome awesome thing in my opinion so my first ever watch with this movement right so it's quite thick at about um, 13 millimeters so yeah they are going for something like a uh, diverse uh, chronograph here but still a nice piece but i don't really know why people hate this brand so much yeah you know what um, I, i'm not saying that you should give it a chance but still handle the watch first then only you judge right so that is what <laughs> i i always do so yep okay let's put it on wrist so i'm putting i've it came on a all white <laughs> rubber strap which you know what <laughs> it's going to be dirt is going to collect that really really easy so i've not I, I i took it off and put it wear it on nato ever since i've got it and yeah this is how it looks on my 6.75 inch wrist yep come on focus 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 yep that is how it looks on my skinny wrist so this is watch number three and let's go to watch number four which is another 
chronograph oh i for forgot to mention this watch filippo loretti sent me that is why you will see a paid promotion tag all right so next up is another watch that is sent to me for free by the strap by the watchmaker which is the riser alpine chronograph right so this one um, you have that <laughs> how to say this square-ish looking uh, look designed to it and we have that beautiful uh, sunburst dark gray dial but this one is featuring come on focus guys focus 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 right so of course we have that um, pusher here we start the chronograph right so you see that ticking uh, uh, chrono hand so basically it is using the Miyota S01 or is it M M S zero one. I don't really remember, but still, uh, apply indices. We have these three three um, register here, and we have a dead wheel at four o'clock. So yeah, a bit of quite a nice design in my opinion. So it's not really that uh, thin either way. So it is about twelve millimeters in thickness, and we have this um, integrated strap. So they also produce this uh, produces in uh, stainless steel bracelet, but I have the they sent me this rubber one which is quite good actually so this one is using the uh, butterfly class and yeah i don't really mind it but still if they if this if if they sent me the version with the bracelet i might <laughs> not going to use it because i just don't like integrated bracelet and it is going to be a bit too heavy on my wrist so yeah uh, a a, a rubber strap would be a better option for me at least right but of course they also produce the automatic the automatic version which is using the uh, Seiko NH35 and yeah this is how it looks on my skinny 6.75 inch wrist so come on focus right so this is how it looks and let's go to watch number five which is another chronograph but this time around it is using a manual hand wind manual <laughs> manual hand winding movement which is the uh seagull st 1901 so this is the san martin sn 0052g i think they call it right so this is i've recently done an in initial video review for this particular piece so the come on focus right so there we have it so it is actually not a white dial guys so this is a um a very very light silver colorway so you can see when i turn it around so yeah i can i think you can see that so it is not actually an off-white and yeah it has that dual register dial here with those applied indices and yeah let's you know what let's just unscrew the pushes <laughs> unscrew the pushes and let's see how the um yeah okay so that is the quite a nice click there so we have this you see this first time you would definitely get it that this is an homage to the to the black bay chronograph with a few difference of course right so the hands the the i've complained that the minute hands is too quite i think it needs to they need to make it longer at maybe around one millimeters to you know at least <laughs> reach the uh in this the hour uh, hour marker here yeah but other than that i think it looks okay and of course being a an nst 1901 movement it doesn't have any date wheel and the real thing does have all right so the tudor does have a dead wheel at the six o'clock here and it has this ceramic bezel insert which the real thing doesn't have so i prefer ceramic of course some say that it is a bit too shiny if they're using ceramic bezel insert but still i don't i don't really mind it and this case is quite thick guys at about 14 or i think it's about 13 millimeters and the lux to lux is 50 millimeters and the lug width is 20 millimeters for me it is still usable uh, I just don't like 22 millimeters uh, chronograph watch because it is it does feel a bit heavy, and yeah. Uh, oh, the, the the let's just stop the second hand and boom. Yeah, <laughs> that is why we love this uh, ST19 movement, right? So screw that back in. The only other gripe that I have with this particular watch is that the hand winding, right? So it the crown is still way too short. I think they should add a little bit more of height here so that easy for we for us to hand wind the movement. So lucky I don't really wear these things uh, every uh, every now and then. So I just wear it maybe once a week. So I don't really mind doing that once a week. But if you guys have to do this every single day, it's going to be a little bit of annoyance, right? So this is watch number five and let's go to the pilot watches right so 
I say watches but I only have one <laughs> so yeah this is the Boltony W10 homage watch right so a quite a nice and chunky little watch so this is 36 millimeters but because of the height at about 14 millimeters with that super dome uh, single dome sapphire crystal it does feels like a 38 millimeters watch and 42 millimeters from luck to luck and with an 18 millimeters uh, luck with right so um awesome loom on this thing and of course i put it on this vario uh, bun straps which makes it looks totally cool and yeah oh i totally forgot to put the you know what let's to put the uh, saint martin on resolve yeah let's just show how that 50 millimeters luck to luck really really looks on the wrist right so yep this is how it looks quite large watch because of course because of that 50 to 50 millimeters luck to luck and also the white dial or, or sorry the silver dial yeah it does make it little bit too come on little bit too big in my opinion right so i sh you know what i prefer it to be 39 millimeters right so let's put the boltony w10 on the wrist oops let's see yep and yeah i just love how this thing looks although the origin originally the watch is quite thick at about 14 millimeters but and when you i add in the um uh, the bond strap so yeah it does make it a lot uh, <laughs> feels a bit bigger but so you know what for a pilot sh pilot watch i think it suits the watch perfectly for perfectly right so this is watch number six and let's go to watch number seven which is a feel watch right so again so this one is featuring the exact same case as the snkl 45 but this is called the snk 381 um a field looking dial here we have right so we have um oh my god let's just oh, <laughs> struggling here guys sorry about that okay so let's this is featuring that um, numeric arabic numeric dial so with that matte black dial i just when i saw this watch i was like oh my god that looks awesome so it is of course the same exact same watch case that uh, with that SNKL45 but somehow the uh, matte black dial with this Arabic numerals with that black date will day and date looks much much better to me and those hands right so they are fulls of full of loom and this is one of the reason i don't really go for the um the latest seiko 5 which you know what which has this again arabic numerals but doesn't have any loom so that is you know what this is the better watch compared to the new latest seiko 5 series right so the sn srpg something something i don't really remember yeah but yeah still let's see if i could put this behind the camera from behind the camera right so the i put it on this um single pass nato strap from cheapest nato straps.com of course it features the exact same dimension as the snkl 45 so if, so if you guys have quite a lot of 18 millimeters uh watch as watch uh band watch strap so this would fit just nice right so i bet this would also look awesome on that bunt or bun strap and yeah i just love how this thing looks right so this is watch number seven and let's go with the tritium watches right the tritium watches this is the um carnival a watch a chinese watch brand which is of course like i, I mentioned just now is using tritium tubes and this is i'm not really sure how to call this maybe we should call it a again a field watch right so because that one is a field watch this one is again field watch but with a with tritium tubes we have uh how much uh, how, how do we have that one the 12 plus 3 yeah 15 tritium tube it, i think this one mimics one of the models from um what was it uh victorinox i think i don't really remember the modern name for that particular piece but yeah still it is looking nice with that carbon fiber dial maybe it is a real carbon fiber maybe it is not i'm not really sure but for something that costs about 60 bucks from aliexpress i think it looks awesome nonetheless right so 40 millimeters in diameter thickness of just 12 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters i think this is a perfect go go anywhere do anything kind of watch and yeah and i've put it it originally came with a bracelet 
with a uh, butterfly class but I don't <laughs> really like how the butterfly class look and feels and yeah where is why I put it on this silicone strap from um uh, not vario uh from blueshackstraps.com right so this day is how it the carnival watch looks on the on my skinny wrist and i think it looks okay not that bad right so of course this is a quartz watch and i've had this for about three or four years already and it is still kicking bad with not with no <laughs> there's no loud ticking sound such as timexes and all that stuff but yeah still the next the last acquisition of this group which is my the ball fireman um ducks unlimited a i have not really sure what to call this right so it is is it a dress watch is it a i don't know what do, what do you guys think i i just call it a my gada go anywhere do anything kind of watch but still um there are quite a lot of <laughs> polished surfaces here you see that beautifully done um what do you call this uh bevel uh bezel here so it is not the straight curve it has this um curve and then another uh, just a chamfer and then the curve here so with the the mid case is quite thin and very very curvy oops come on focus right so you can see that it's curves quite a lot right so uh, flat sapphire crystal with that awesome 330 sorry 63 uh 3 tm tube on the on the dial oh sorry 63 tm tubes on the dial and of course uh, another three tubes uh, treating tips on the hands themselves so awesome awesome watch with this uh, date complication and quite a nice uh, chunky uh, crown here right so yeah it features it has of course that um, they call it ball rr movement but it is basically a an eta 2824 and it has that dark gray dial with that uh, yellow uh, yellow printing brindle printing at the Twelve o'clock and also and the, on the and the six o'clock and we have that beautiful yellow second hands with a little bit of uh, what do you call this cross hair <laughs> pattern in the middle so yeah and the engraving at the back guys so you can see that ducks unlimited established 1950 nine, was it 1937 right so uh yep 1937 so shock resist um swiss made and this one also features a magnetic resistance right so you I, I don't know i don't really know what understand why um ball watches doesn't really get that much attention but still i think they are awesome awesome watch for the price right so of course 40 millimeters in from uh, the uh, the diameter is 40 millimeters thickness of about 12 millimeters and lack to lack of 48 millimeters making it looks modern without being too small or without being too big right so i have no idea why the focus is off today <laughs> struggling to get a good uh, color today so of course it's uh, i put it i've took it off from the bracelet and, and currently i'm using it on this item sale cloth strap right so and we should go for the loom check right so let's just pause the video and we will come back with the loom check right i'm just gonna put it over there and we are good to go okay guys so i've just charged the um the watches and boom yay so that is how the each watch looks other than the um the rado cranes so there's no loom over there so this is the snkl 45 and this one is the uh what was it was was this one a this is the filippo lorati chronograph and this one is the riser chronograph watch and this one is the oops sn0052 the to the black bay homage uh, watch and this one is the um this is the boltony w10 watch and uh, what else yep this one is the snkl381 that's 37 millimeters wonders and of course this one is the one of the two 3tm watches right so you know what let's just oops okay so let's just give it a little bit of last so that is the ball fireman awesome awesome watch with that green uh, 3tm tube at the back there and yeah i just love how that thing looks but with uh, the carnival right the carnival is not really that bad right so you can see that oh my god yeah it somehow it doesn't work using this particular particular lamp particular uv lamp man yeah so 
you can only see the orange color but yeah you can see that the blue colors on each indices does work right so there you have it guys so tons of um just nine um <laughs> the third sotc video of the year so hopefully in the next one index year i would be able to collect some more and maybe some of these will go out of the collection and maybe i will add a i will add a few more watches inside this category especially the uh, pilot watches right so i don't really have that much i just have one right now so yeah do let me know what uh what are your thoughts on my uh collection uh, on my dress watches chronograph watches and pilot watches and even field watches and what do you think i should add and what do you think i should um this i, sp I sh should should sell or what do you think maybe i should give give away one of these watches right so what do you guys think so do let me know in the comment section below so if you guys like this video please give me a big thumbs up and if you want to see more future video reviews such as this one please go ahead and subscribe to my channel until next time i'll see you soon stay safe and bye bye